ya hmm. <coughs> oh god hmm. well nancy it's nice to see you again thank you you as well destiny turns on the radio yes <laughs> what do you think that title means i have I no idea <laughs> Well, we know who Destiny is. Yes, exactly. Yes, Quentin Tarantino, mm -hmm. as an actor this time, not as a director. Right. Yeah. yeah. He was he was a delight to work with. Really? It, yeah. He um, he's got amazing energy. He's always up, always uh, enthusiastic, and um, I don't know what he's on, but I want some. I want some too. <laughs> it's six o'clock in the morning or midnight. He's there with that energy, full of trivia and ideas and cool things. It, it, it's a pleasure. <laughs> You have uh, some scenes in this. Well, you're a lounge singer. Let's right. set that up. You are a, a Vegas lounge singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, one scene, you wear this jade green sequin thing. Number. Yes. And every woman in the audience wants to hiss. I mean, <laughs> it's it's just not right that you look oh, so good dear. in that. <laughs> well, thank you. I, it's um, it wasn't fun wearing it though. So I will say that it was a. Uh, the thing weighed about 50 pounds, and I was scotch taped into it. I'm the classic kind of person who uh, would wear a dress like that and turn around, the whole thing would shift over, and it would be embarrassing. So I was, uh, and I made sure that those straps were triple sewn in so the thing wouldn't fall off. But it was, uh, you had to think about wearing it. It wasn't like wearing a pair of jeans, which I'm much more comfortable in. But are you all with a body foundation, or they just put that over your body? It's just put on, yeah. See that makes you that makes women even matter. <laughs> if you said you had some sort of a spandex undergarment, no, you know, then no. they'd say, oh, "Well, she was all kind of corseted in or something." No, yeah, that was me. And you're just naturally like that. You don't have to work. At Pretty much, I do. I do exercise, but I'm not. Um, I'm not fanatical about it at all. And and I like to eat. I, I um, genetic. My my dad's thin and my mom's thin, so. Yeah, but I mean, it does catch up with me if I if I uh, I do love to eat. So, and plus I'm hyper. You can see me here. It's like, <laughs> do you sing? Do you do your own singing? No, not at all. And and uh, you should be thankful of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're very good at lip singing. Thank you. I must Thank say, you. the voice is uh, is that of Elaine Mandel, who's a singer here in Los Angeles, who um, uh, I think was was a great match for me. Uh, and uh, and I just uh, I I observed her, the way she sang as well too, especially in the first song, Baltimore Oriole. She's got a very intimate style, an intimate relationship between her and the song, and uh, and I thought that was that was a thing to catch when uh, when I performed it. Do you have any favorite singers? Uh, gosh, a, a lot of them. I I love Billie Holiday, uh, Carmen Frey. Um, the jazz greats. Yeah, and I, Chrissy Hind of The Pretenders, all-time favorite. Uh, I love real women's voices. I love women that really get into songs. I like Annie Lennox a lot. Um, it's just, yeah, those people. Did you meet and talk with any lounge singers just to get a feel for their lives? Um, not really, because I think Lucille's life is very, it, it's not typical. It's not a typical life that she has in this movie and she she comes from to me she was an innocent girl coming from the midwest who wanted to uh, uh, to be a singer and she had her own personal style of singing and she brought it to vegas which is not exactly uh, the mecca for that sort of thing if, if she was going to be a showgirl that would be something else but uh, she was also she's also romantic and and just looking for love and 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 finds it in the in the guys of Dylan McDermott who plays Julian and they meet and it's like a train wreck they just fall head over heels in love and can't see straight and uh, and, I, and I basically put together her life because it's a very personal thing and very particular to her as a character. Growing up Nancy who were actresses you admired? Well all the old greats I loved I mean uh, Ingrid Bergman and Rita Hayworth and Barbara Stanwyck Vivian Lee, of course, a, a great favorite. Uh, and then as I grew older, when I was really concentrating on being, act, being an actress, it was the era when, uh, when Sally Field was doing Norma Ray and Meryl Streep was doing Sophie's Choice, and there were great roles for women and, and astounding performances. Um, and uh, I, I enjoyed this French actress, Nat Natalie Day, uh, a lot of different actresses. It's, it's a lot, too, with the performance as well. 
Jessica Lange of Extraordinary Human Blue Sky. Okay. Whoever, whatever actor or actress takes me on a journey where I forget that I'm watching a person executing a craft and I really feel taken in and I'm moved or I'm, I'm uh, laughing, as long as, I, as long as I'm transported on that journey with them, I'm, I'm a believer and a fan. Have you ever met someone you admired greatly and you were just suddenly awe-stricken? Uh, Robert Redford. Really? I think. Yes, I, I was at Sundance one, one summer, and he was a person uh, who I met and just, uh, I, I was spellbound by. I, I just thought he was, he was really bright and um, had an aura about him that was awesome. We call it good looks. <laughs> good looks, but also an, an energy, like a confidence or something that was really, made me um, nervous. To be around, yeah. Ethel Fugard as well. He, he's a playwright uh, director that I worked with. He was another person like that. That that just to be around was had has had a wonderful energy and that that was inspirational. You have people coming up to you and they get all tongue tied when they try to talk with you. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, a lot of times, sometimes people come up to me and they they'll spot me and they'll come up to me and they'll say. Um, you look really familiar. Where do I know you from? And I'll say, well, well, I'm an actress. Maybe, maybe you've seen me in something. I don't know. And they'll say, no, no. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> but you have a neat sense of humor. I've Thank always, you. Yeah, I've always <laughs> enjoyed that about you. Thanks. And it, it really does get us through the rough times, doesn't it? It gets me through it, too, believe me. <laughs> Nancy, it's always fun talking with you. Thank and you. Congratulations to Thank all of you. you on Destiny Turns, Turns on, on the radio. radio. Whatever that means. <laughs> Go see it. You'll figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Here today, I think. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> oh God. Well, Nancy, it's nice to see you again. Thank you. You as well. Destiny turns on the radio. Yes. So what do you think that title means? I have I no don't idea. Know. <laughs> well, we know who Destiny is. Yes, exactly. Yes, Quentin Tarantino. Mm -hmm. As an actor at this time, not as a director. Right. Yeah. yeah. He was he was a delight to work with. Really? It, yeah. He um he's got amazing energy. He's always up, always uh, enthusiastic. I don't know what he's on, but I want some. I want some too. It's six <laughs> o'clock in the morning or midnight. He's there with that energy, full of trivia and ideas and cool things. He's a pleasure. <laughs> you have uh, some scenes in this. Well, you're a lounge singer. Let's right. set that up. You are a, a Vegas lounge singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, one scene, you wear this jade green sequin thing. Number. Yes. And every woman in the audience wants to hiss. I mean, <laughs> it's it's just not right that you look oh, so good dear. in that. <laughs> well, thank you. I, it's um, it wasn't fun wearing it though, so I will say that it was uh, the thing weighed about fifty pounds, and I was scotch taped into it. I, I'm the classic kind of person who uh, would wear a dress like that and turn around, the whole thing would shift over, and it would be embarrassing. So I was, uh, and I made sure that those straps were triple sewn in so the thing wouldn't fall off. But, it was, um, you had to think about wearing it. It wasn't like wearing a pair of jeans, which I'm much more comfortable in. But are you all with a body foundation, or they just put that over your body? It's just put on, yeah. It's See, that makes, you, on. that makes women even matter. <laughs> <laughs> if you said you had some sort of a spandex undergarment, uh, no, you know, then no. they'd say, oh, well, she was all kind of corseted in or something. No, yeah, that was me. And you're just naturally like that. You don't have to work. I do, I do exercise, but I'm not, um, I'm not fanatical about it at all, and, and I like to eat. I, I, um, genetic, my, my dad's thin and my mom's thin, so, yeah. But I mean, it does catch up with me if I, if I, uh, I do love to eat, so. And I'm, plus, I'm hyper. You can see me here. It's like. <laughs> do you sing? Do you do your own singing? No, not at all, and, and uh, you should be thankful of that. <laughs> Well, you're very good at lip syncing, Thank you. I must Thank say. You. The voice is, uh, is that of Eleni Mandel, who's a singer here in Los Angeles, who um, uh, I think was, was a great match for me. Uh, and, uh, and I just, uh, I, I observed her, the way she sang as well, too, especially in the first song, Baltimore Orioles. She's got a very intimate style, an intimate relationship between her and the song. And, uh, and I, 
thought that was that was a thing to catch uh, in my performance. Do you have any favorite singers? Uh, gosh, a, a lot of them. I, I love Billie Holiday, uh, Carmen McRae. Um, the jazz greats. Yeah, and I, Chrissy Hind of The Pretenders, all-time favorite. Uh, I love real woman's voices. I love women that really get into songs. I like Annie Lennox a lot. Um, it's just, yeah, those people. Did you meet and talk with any lounge singers just to get a feel for their lives? Um, not really, because I think Lucille's life is very, it, it's not typical. It's not a typical life that she has in this movie. And she, she comes from, to me, she was an innocent girl coming from the Midwest who wanted to, uh, uh, to be a singer. And she had her own personal style of singing, and she brought it to Vegas, which is not exactly uh, the mecca for that sort of thing. If, if she was going to be a showgirl, that would be something else. But uh, she was also, she's also romantic and, and just looking for love and, and, uh, and finds it in the, in, the, in the guise of Dylan McDermott, who plays Julian. And they meet, and it's like a train wreck. They just fall head over heels in love and can't see straight. And, uh, and, I, and I basically put together her life, because it's a very personal thing and very particular to her as a character. Growing up, Nancy, who were actresses you admired? Well, all the old greats I loved. I mean, uh, Ingrid Bergman and Rita Hayworth and Barbara Stanwyck. Vivian Lee, of course, a, a great favorite. Uh, and then as I grew older, when I was really concentrating on being, act being an actress, it was the era when, uh, when Sally Field was doing Norma Ray and Mel Street was doing Sophie's Choice, and there were great roles for women and, and astounding performances. Um, and uh, I, I enjoyed this French actress, Nat Natalie Day, uh, a lot of different actresses. It's, it's a lot, too, with the performance as well. You know, Jessica Lange was extraordinary. She went on Blue Sky. Whoever, whatever actor or actress takes me on a journey where I forget that I'm watching a person executing a craft and I really feel taken in and I'm moved or I'm, I'm uh, laughing, as long as, I, as long as I'm transported on that journey with them, I'm, I'm a believer and a fan. Have you ever met someone you admired greatly and you were just suddenly awestricken? Uh, Robert Redford. Really? I think. Yes, I, I was at Sundance one, one summer, and he was a person uh, who I met and just, uh, I, w I was spellbound by. I, I just thought he was, he was really bright and um, had an aura about him that was awesome. We call it good looks. <laughs> good looks, but also an, an energy, like a confidence or something that was really, it made me um, nervous to be around. But Ethel Fugard as well. He, he's a playwright uh, director that I worked with. He was another person like that, that, that just to be around was, had, has had a wonderful energy in it that, that was inspirational. You have people coming up to you and they get all tongue-tied when they try to talk with you? Uh, sometimes, sometimes. A lot of times, sometimes people come up to me and they, they'll spot me and they'll come up to me and they'll say, um, you look really familiar. Where do I know you from? And I'll say, well, well, I'm an actress. Maybe, maybe you've seen me in something. I don't know. And they'll say, no, no. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> but you have a neat sense of humor. I've Thank always, you. Yeah, I've always <laughs> enjoyed that about you. Thanks. And it, it really does get us through the rough times, doesn't it? It gets me through it, too, believe me. <laughs> Nancy, it's always fun talking with you. Thank and you. Congratulations to Thank all of you. you on Destiny Turns, Turns on, on the Radio. radio. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> Go see it. You'll figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent.